Cameras, we use them every day for taking a picture or taking a selfie. As a whole, mankind has taken around 3.8 trillion photos. In 2020, there were 1.4249 trillion photos taken. That's an increase of 8% since 2019. But have you ever considered how the camera came about in the first place? It begins with the human desire to capture reality, which began with drawing and painting. Following this came the camera obscura. The idea of the camera obscura is seen as early as the 4th century BC through the writings of an old Chinese philosopher, Mosey. Over the next millennium it had been used by many a person from Roger Bacon to Leonardo da Vinci. This camera works by reflecting light off an external structure and turning it upside down in complete detail and colour. The camera obscura was among the first discoveries made in optics and eventually it led to various innovations such as glasses. So how did we get something like this from the camera obscura? Let's go back to France, 1826. Joseph Nietzsche, a French inventor, had been experimenting with light-sensitive materials for quite some time and used his knowledge of chemistry to develop a bitumen solution that he covered over a pewter plate. He then exposed it to eight hours of sunlight, capturing the first photograph known to mankind. After Nietzsche's death in 1833, Louis Daguerre took this idea and geared it towards public use in the form of a daguerreotype. This is what cameras look like. This camera is from 1891. It was manufactured in London by a German optician named John Henry Dalmeyer. With the daguerreotypes, retaking an image really wasn't an option, so in the year 1900, Kodak released this, the Kodak Brownie. The Brownie was the introduction to everyday photography as we know it today. As you can see, this is just a miniature version of the camera obscura. Consumers of this product would never develop the images themselves, hence the tagline, you press the button, we will do the rest. brought along the Kodak No. 1 folding pocket camera. This camera introduced a very neat self-erecting mechanism that provided a rigid structure. Pocket Kodak was introduced in 1926 in New York. Eastman Kodak had just brought out autographic film, so this camera used 120 autographic film. This camera was also a folding camera, hence the name Pocket Kodak.
Here we see the Kodak 620 folding brownie. This was made in 1937 in London. The film size is 620 roll of film. It has a fixed focus meniscus lens in a Codet 2 shutter. Staki is a series of 16mm cameras introduced in Japan after World War II and made by Asahi Musa. At that time film and processing costs were expensive so 16mm cameras were very popular. Most of these 16mm cameras were low quality and not much more than toys. The Staki came with interchangeable lenses, variable shutter and aperture speeds in a very robust camera. the camera was redesigned, getting away from the average box camera design. It was changed so that the inner part of the camera was fixed to the side panel along with the film winding knob. Pictures were 6 by 6 centimetres on 120 film. The Bencini Comet was the first of a series of cameras made from 1948 into the 1950s. It is a viewfinder camera and is fitted with a 60mm meniscus lens. This camera is capable of capturing 16 half frame exposures on 127 film by the use of two red windows. Piccadilly Circus, the stone village green of London. Take your girl out to buy a handbag or an enormous limousine, you start from here. From London's most used underground station, you can get anywhere that matters for a few pennies. This is the West End. Full of famous and discreet shops that sell fishing tackle or jog balls or down. You can browse around in elegant arcades like long drawing rooms or in Bond Street, one of the world's great shopping streets. Shopping for the newest things, the latest things, or even a nice cabbage if you happen to live here. People still do, although there are no shepherds in Shepherd Market now, any more than there is hay in the Haymarket. The Comet 1220 was made in Birmingham in 1950 from cardboard and metal and used 120 roll film. The Kodak Duoflex 1 was made by Kodak from 1949 to 1955 in the UK. It used 620 film and had a Codet meniscus lens. The Kodak Brownie 127 was made by Kodak from 1952 to 1959 in the UK. It was an extremely popular plastic snapshot viewfinder model for a 127 film camera. Over a million had been sold by August 
Instamatic 500 was a manual exposure viewfinder camera for 126 film cartridges, one of the highest specification models ever to be offered in the Instamatic range. It was made in Germany in 1963. The Polaroid Super Swinger was an instant camera made in the UK in 1972. Kodak Ektra 200 is among many 110 film cameras made by Kodak. It used disposable flip flash for indoor photography, was made in West Germany and was produced from 1980 to 1987. The Olympus 40 was manufactured from 1983 to 1987. It was introduced at a list price of 685 US dollars for the body alone. It was battery powered, electromechanically controlled manual focus SLR with manual exposure control or aperture priority auto exposure. The Canon EOS 650 was the first camera in their new EOS series. This is a compact VHS video movie. It was made in 1998 in Japan. The 2009 Canon PowerShot SX220HS was known for creating stunning images in all situations. The 2010 Nikon Coolpix P300 was an advanced compact that offered full manual controls with a fast zoom lens. Over the years cameras have transformed from box to film to Polaroid to DSLR to GoPro and even smartphones. So next time you take a picture, consider how much history went into capturing that one moment. <laughs>